Let me get in this word. Uh, we're going to be coming from Psalm uh, 30 and uh, from verses 1 to, through 12. And it reads, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, thou, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endured but for a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy coming in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I, I shall never be moved. Lord, by the favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong, thou didst hide, it my faith, hide my faith, thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplications. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit, shall the dust praise thee? Shall I declare the truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, Lord. Be thou my helper. Thou hast turned from me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast turned me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth, sackcloth and girded me with gl gladness. Girded me with gladness, y'all. To the end, that my glory may sing praises to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. Thank you for your word. Father God, I appreciate, Father God, everything that you spoke to me, everything you gave me, Father God, from this scripture. I pray, Father God, that you give all the people that are here and are listening an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Father God, increase in me, dear Lord. And I promise I will decrease, dear Lord. So, Father God, bless our time in the Word. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, y'all know, I look like we've been in Psalms a little bit uh, uh, thus often. Frankie was in uh, at Psalm uh, 46. And I was, I've been in Psalm 23, but uh, <laughs> as I was perusing through the scriptures, Minister Sam, you know, uh, God had me pop in Psalm 30, man. I, I went to study for another thing, and God piqued my interest, you know, and I, you know, I, I relented, you know, because I, I belong to him, not myself, you know. I'm his child, you know, so... Whatever he says, you know, I do. And he give me strength to do what he says. But uh, David, in this psalm, David wrote this psalm. There's a few uh, different stories. There's a few different things that people say about this. A few commentators say about this uh, text right here. Uh, one of them is it's probably the truth, but all of them may be the truth. But this one, David, they said uh, David sung this, David spoke this at the dedication of his palace. And uh, I read a little bit about the palace and uh, the king of Tyre, David didn't even pay for this palace. Another king, God put uh, 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 another king, put it on a heart, the heart of another king to send forth him the building material, to send forth him the laborers, and to send forth the, the architects, everything that he needed to build his palace. That's what it make, makes this palace. And I, I, as, as we studied this, this text, I could kind of see that, that because he didn't pay a cent for this palace, they say this palace was beautiful. This, you know, I, it, he was a king, so you know, this, this palace wasn't no uh, you know, a sh shotgun house. This wasn't no little small, little one-bedroom place. This was a palace, my people. And not only a palace, but a well-built palace. And I probably, they probably had the most expensive stuff in that palace. Not the cheap material, not that, 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 that sawdust, that cardboard material. But I'm talking about real cedar, real wood, probably laid in gold and stuff. I haven't did a lot of research, but I can imagine it being laid in gold. Everything uh, 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 detailed with gold, uh, uh, you know, paper, gold, you know, fillings, gold, this and that. 
So I can imagine how nice it was. And I can imagine him receiving this palace and then saying this song about, you know, giving glory to God. You know, and also during this dedication, some people say also it was a rededication because his son Absalom had committed this, this, this ground, gross uh, sin, you know, incest and defiled his palace. So he, some people say he, this was a rededica- rededication. You know, after he got that filled out, after, after God got that filled out, after God redeemed him back to where he was, God said, Red- the, rededicate this palace. Because this palace is going to be used for something great. This palace is going to be used for his kingdom, for God's kingdom. And so this was sometimes people say this was a a rededication to that palace, uh, uh, for the palace. And and, 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 in Deuteronomy, they have a text where it says, you know, you know, go dedicate your home. Don't go dedicate your palace unless somebody come behind you and rededicate it themselves. You know, so. I think that was a warning to us. You know, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to say, you know, are we, are we dedicating our home to God? <laughs> are we dedicating everything that we have to God? Are we dedicating uh, 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 our job to God? Are we dedicating our family to God? Are we dedicating what God has given us back to him? Are we dedicating the work? Are we dedicating what we do? Are we dedicating the first thing that we wake up, are we dedicating our day to God? <laughs> and, and I was thinking about that. You know, have I really dedicated? Because God was the one that got me this house. God was the one that got me this job. God was the one that woke me up this morning, had me in my right mind. I could use my fingers. I could walk. Now, why wouldn't I rededicate everything that he has for me back to him? <laughs> that money you got in that bank account? The, the investments that you are winning at, those, 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 those favors that the, the people are giving towards you, that favor that you have on that job, that favor that you have with your family, that favor that you have at the DMV, that favor that you have at Dollar Tree, that favor you have at the mall, that, t- that favor you have at Amazon. Are you dedicating that to the Lord? Or is that because you think you slick? You think you clever? You think you, you the one, you the one? Or are you dedicating everything you do for the Lord? Tonight, while you're on your night, your night be. Go through the things you got. Go through the things that God has given you. Go through the achievements that God has uh, given, uh, given you favor to achieve. Go back and ask yourself, did I dedicate that to God? <laughs> did I? When you're laying in that bed, that house, when you're laying in that room, because God could give you just that room tonight. Not that four or five bedroom house, not that kitchen, not that, that backyard, not the makers you had. God could put you in that one room. Because I didn't, you know, I didn't bless people and got them in some little small rooms, some little hotels, and I'd be like, man. And look, they was in that room like that was a palace. <laughs> so are you dedicated? Are you giving glory to God? Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But look, dedicate everything that you have to the Lord. And what, 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 what I mean by that and what that means, Miss Linda, is this house is going to be used for God. <laughs> if God want to use this house to have a men's group, to have a ladies group, if you, God want to use this house so somebody can sleep overnight or somebody can use a room while they're at Passover, you're going to let them people use your house because God say so. <laughs> that vehicle, that nice vehicle you got with all that room back then, I'm talking about myself. Are you bringing people to church? Or you're giving them a ride. Or you're dedicating that truck, that building, that, that house, that, that your clothes, whatever, your, your job, you got an extra little bit of money in your, your, your bank account. You, or you're using that for God's glory. Today, 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 my people, we need to switch that direction. Instead of looking at the mirror at ourselves, you look at what people need. You look at what God wants you to do. You look at what God wants you to do. Uh, focus on, to study on, to pay attention on. This is our focus uh, uh, that has to be uh, uh, in our minds today. Because if you have that in your heart, that means mercy, grace is going to follow you. (laughs) Hey, 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 favor will follow. If you want God's favor, you give him glory. You give him everything that you have, everything that you are uh, a part of, everything. Being a part of this movement, being a part, being alive today 
in this time and see God have you allowed today in this year, 2024, for a reason. And you should be dedicating everything that you have because God got you alive to see the last great awakening. <laughs> I often, I often uh, think about what we learn, think about all the deep things that we are getting, Ms. Erm, and I'm, I, I, I thank God, and I, I, I think about it like, I couldn't have not, I could have, I could have missed it. Yes, I could have been in the streets, I could have been in the club, I could have been doing anything else, Kip, but I'm here seeing this. I'm here seeing people get saved, I'm seeing my people get the revelation. I'm here receiving the flat earth. Come on, where you gonna learn this at? <laughs> what are you going to learn about the Hebrews? What are you going to learn about the deep things of this word, my people? What are you going? I don't know where they're getting to that. I don't know. I ain't going to say Philadelphia is the only place, but I, I'm telling you, it's far and few behind. So the fact that I'm here getting that thing, Ms. Lou, Ms. Randy, I should be dedicating everything to God. <laughs> Dedicate everything to God. Oh, I could keep, I could go on, I could go on. But this is this is David's psalm. And and I was talking with a brother uh yesterday or day before Sunday, and we were talking about David. You know, in the in the scriptures, Miss Linda, the Bible says David was a, a man after God's own heart. <laughs> and, and, and I thought about it from a, a, a backward standpoint, uh, Kay. I thought about it, I say, well, if he's a man after God's own heart. That means he knows God's heart. And if I want to know God's heart, I'm reading, some, I'm reading some, about somebody that knows God's heart. So when I'm perusing, I learned that word today, that's so why I'm seeing it again. Perusing. I learned that I'm learning some new words, y'all, so y'all help me out. But uh, I was perusing through the scriptures, and I'm always perusing through Psalms. And when I read Psalms, I feel like I could know God's heart a little bit more. Because David knew God's heart. David knew God's heart when he was cutting up. David knew God's heart when he was on top, when he was at under the bottom, when he was up, like, like we were about to get in this text. God, uh, David knew God's heart when he was straight doing wickedness against him. <laughs> and he talks about that. He says he was about to go in the grave in the pit. And God still was looking at him. God was still reaching his hand out to him. God was still, he, God was perusing around to see what he, he could take out this pit. God was walking around to see who in the ditch. God was walking around who's still, still caught up in some unrighteous things, some, some, some foul sin. God is perusing. You see, I wasn't looking for God. God came looking for me. God was flipping around. God was flipping and praying, and he saw me, and I said, hey, you know, you need to get out of that pit, son. <laughs> There's more to life than this pit. There's more to life than this pit. And I'm talking about pit could be anything. This pit of drugs. This, this pit of the clubs. This pit of money. This pit of women. This pit of men. This, this pit of all these things. God come get you out of that pit. Now, why God did that? I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I wanted to teach something me and Hunt was talking about. But God did it for his sake. You see, God saved you. God came get you because... <laughs> because of his uh, 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 liking, because of what he wanted to do. You think you saved because you wanted to get saved? God saved you. God came chase you because he wanted to show off what he could do when somebody gets saved and under me. <laughs> you know, we brag on God, but look, God want to do some great things in your life because he want to brag on you. <laughs> so, hey, hey, let him brag on you. Stop fighting God. Stop, stop, stop putting up your dukes against God. Stop uh, 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 elbowing God. Stop talking about God. You may not talk, be talking about God with your words, but you're talking about God with your action. <laughs> hey, and what you're saying about God is not right. You want God to be proud of you. You want God to be proud. When, when, when people see you and they know you're a Christian, they're going to give God glory. They are not only going to get God glory, but they're going to come chase you. They're going to come pursue you to see what, they, what you got that they don't have. And I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus Christ. So today, if you're feeling empty, if you're feeling like you're worth, your life is not worth nothing, let me tell you something. Jesus is looking for you. Jesus wants you. You know, 
<laughs> Jesus wants you to come back home. <laughs> hey, and, 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 and not only come back home, but he's been sending his agents to come get you. He's been sending his agents to knock at your door, knock at your window. He's been sending circumstances. He's been sending situations to come and show that he still loves you, that he still wants you, that he still thinks highly of you. It is not too late. It is, you are not far gone enough to say that God don't want you. That's a lie from the pits of hell. The fact that you're in here, the fact that you're listening to this, whatever he look like, mixed black, Chinese, African, uh, Indian person, you don't worry about how I look. You worry about what I'm saying. I'm saying what Christ is saying. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Even, even how I say stuff, I might pronounce something, I might do my grammar bad, but look, you understand what I'm talking about. Because when you get with your partners, when you get with your guns, y'all talk crazy too, and you understand what she and he said. So don't come out and act like, <laughs> so don't come out here acting like you're proper because I'm not saying the right things that you can't listen to me. That's a lie too. Hey, hey. Phil, I said I was going to behave, but I lied to you, man. <laughs> and I even started my first point, minister. That's crazy. Lord, Jesus. I was excited earlier, Carl. I say, well, I almost came to church at 12 and just started. <laughs> eh, Montgomery. <laughs> Miss Leo. Hey, them boys would have come in here and they'd have been like, Lord, we need to pray for Amigo. <laughs> Either that or just let them keep preaching. I'm going to be up here, look, hey, I'm going to be on four, uh, a point 45, but I'm going to be here. <laughs> but look, if you're in here, if you are sitting in this sanctuary, that's enough for you to know that God loves you. <laughs> hey, you can't sit here and lie to me and say you was wanting and chasing after God. <laughs> The fact that you want to listen to this word, the fact that you want to pray, the fact that you want to hear this word of God, what it's talking about from David is a, a, a good testament that God loves you and God wants you. So come on, my people, don't give up. Today is not the last day. Hey, today is a, a, a revival day for y'all. Hey, press in. Amen. Tie, your, 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 tie your shoes tight. Because guess what? It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Let me tell you something. Oh, man, I, I'm trying, Miss. They can count. I'm trying. They can count. But the Lord keep giving me things. Everything you have learned, I see a lot of, I ain't going to say old believers, but a lot of seasoned believers in here. They've been in Christ. And even if you have been here in here a month, <laughs> three, four, six months, a year, two years, you know enough to get busy. <laughs> you know enough. So, so whatever you know right now, you put it into practice. Whatever you know right now, you put it into existence. You, 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 you put it in your book set, you put it in your wallet, you put it in your pocket, you put it under your, hey, not the tooth fairy, but look, hey, put that under your pillow and look, get to work, my people. Get to work. It's time to not just be a knower of things, <laughs> a knower of things, Ms. Mary, Ms. Margaret, but a doer of things. Prove God right, my people. Prove God right. Prove God right. <laughs> but my first point is, <laughs> I will extol thee. And when I tell you, Carl, that word was in my mind and in my spirit all day. I was just thinking of that extol. And I, I think I've taught from this once or twice, maybe years ago. But God had to revisit and God had to teach me again, Miss Cynthia. He had to bring to remembrance what I learned about this. And David knew this word real good. You know, we don't hear this word too often in our vocabulary. <laughs> when you hear somebody say extol, they'd be like, oh, you read the Bible. Not only read the Bible, but you study. Not only study, but you find out something about this word because you're using it correctly. And when you, when, when you see, hear this word or know this word or when you leave this sermon tonight, when you leave this Bible study tonight, you're going to know and you, I want y'all to be using this word. 
<laughs> Using this word, I will extol thee. And the only thing that extol, the, 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 the thing that extol, uh, what it means is you're putting things on high. <laughs> and and all, all it is, also means is to rise, to rise up, to be high, to be lofty, to be exalted, to be set on high, to be lifted up, to be raised, to be uplifted. This is what extol means. So when you extol something, you're lifting something up. You're raising something up. You're making thing, uh, that thing high and lifted up and enlarged. You are extolling something. So when David says this, I extol thee, and the thee, of, of course y'all know that thee is God. And when David says this, I will extol thee, I, I could just hear him saying it's King David with, with, with authority in his voice. After then been through so much things and then conquered this and that and then experienced all this, I could hear the authority and the command in his voice. He is not only telling y'all I will extol thee or to extol thee, but he is saying to himself, I will extol thee. You know you got to talk to yourself. You're not, you know you got to tell yourself sometimes, uh, uh, hey, 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 hey. I don't know how you're feeling. I don't know, you know, I'm feeling like this. I don't, I'm having some emotional problems. I'm, I'm having a bad day. But look, Anthony, you're going to come to Bible study. <laughs> Anthony, you're going to come and read it. Anthony, you're going to come and read this word. You're going to pray. I don't care how you feel, you're going to pray. So I say that to say that when David is saying this, I will extol thee. You lift up God all times. You lift up God in all ways. You lift up God whenever something is going right in your life. As a matter of fact, if nothing is going right in your life, you should give glory, glory to God. Because guess what? It could be worse. They got some people that would love your problems. Give me them problems. Because <laughs> the problems I'm dealing with, looking into your problems is nothing. When them problems come, when you, are, you can't pay the bills, when you are hurting, when you're in hospital, when your brain is not working, when you, the, the boss is messing with you, when the employees are trying to uh, 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 set you up, you say, I will extol thee. <laughs> and, and, and when you say that, that means you give God glory and you lift them up regardless of the situation. And you lift them up in, in regardless of who you in front, Miss Mary. <laughs> Hey, you lift them up in front of your gangster partners. You lift them up in front of your family. You lift them up in front of the president of the United States. You lift it up wherever you may be. You extol thee. And guess what? God is going to reward you. Hey, uh, uh, oftentimes people looking for a certain formula, Miss Linda. People looking for a certain this to, to this to, to earn favor with God. People looking to, to this and that. Oh, man, I'm doing it. I'm shifting gears, y'all. So people are looking for a sweet formula, a special gift, a special this and a special that. But one of the most important gifts, one of the most important things that you can learn, give God glory. <laughs> hey, hey, when you give God glory, look, it opens the door for a bunch of things because God can trust you and you're not going to take the glory for yourself. When you give God glory, and I'm talking about not only about mouth, deed, but how you walk, talk, how you spend your money, how you eat, how you comb your hair, how you look at people, how you deal with people, that's how you can show God glory by how this. Because a lot of times people be talking about giving God glory, Ms. Irma, giving God glory this, but I'm looking at your life and it don't equate what your mouth is saying. So I'm, I want to say this to myself, Anthony, Minister Anthony, amigo, Anthony Reynolds Jr., hey. <laughs> you walk out what you're talking about, especially I'm being a person teaching the word up here. Why not? I'm not going to be walking about with this word? To, because I, I, got, I got taught this word first. Yes, God showed me what this word is. So how I'm not going to think, think that is that important because God showed me first so I could tell y'all. <laughs> Keep us in prayer though also. But also you be in prayer. Yes, sir. We, we talked about prayer uh, the Sunday I was here teaching. We talked about prayer. When you are praying, the first thing you do, <laughs> you extol thee. <laughs> you, you, you give him glory. Hey, hey, you lift him up on high. <laughs> you put him first, eh, Carl? What we do for noonday prayer and corporate prayer, the first thing we do is give praises and, and glory to God. 
we, we, we tell them thank you. We, we, we turn back and not only uh, uh, tell them thank you, but we also give him glory. We, we, we tell you, Lord, how good you've been to me. We acknowledge that God has been in this all the time. Everything that is good going on in my life, I'm going to give you glory. And I speak it, and I enunciate it, and I say it. But people, we got to graduate from stop saying it. Well, you know, don't stop saying it, but living it. Living it. <laughs> living it. Because guess what? When, when I'm watching a person, when I'm seeing a person, Deacon Carl, when I'm looking at a person, I could tell that they give God glory first. <laughs> because, look, even your existence, even how you walk and talk shows that you give God glory. Because without God, you wouldn't be able to walk. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to put your tennis shoes on. You wouldn't be able to uh, focus your eyes. You wouldn't be able to drive. You wouldn't be able to understand what this word is talking about. Your brain would be fried without God. So because of that, you extol thee. You extol thee. <laughs> you extol thee. Oh, I got 30 minutes. Praise God. Okay, you know, we got to lift him up in good and bad times. Our people, you know, we are about to go through some rough times. But look, God is with us. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, the, 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 the weather patterns, and, and, and Pastor touched on this, the weather patterns, how things going on in society and this nation is an indication of what's going on in the heavens. There's war in the heavens. There, the enemy is mad, you know, and I, I want to uh, ask that y'all pray for that barber that lost his life. Yes, he was an organ player in the, in the church he went to, you know. The enemy is mad, especially in this area where the awakening of the Hebrews is happening. So I want y'all to keep your eyes peeled, keep your uh, 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 spirit on high alert, because guess what? Even in the midst of all that stuff, you have to extol thee. <laughs> and, and, and because you're going to lift him up, because you're going to give him glory, he is going to show you how to walk it out. He is going to show you how to do things. He is going to show you how to attack this situation. He's going to show you the deepest, uh, 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 darkest places on what to attack, what to, what to stay away from. He's going to show you the mysteries of heaven. He's going to show you the oracles that you have living inside of you right now. He is going to show you. Matter of fact, you're going to be understanding and, and talk, talking, talking about things that you uh, uh, didn't usually used to know. But it's because you're giving him glory. You see, our pastor at this church, everything we do at this church is because of him. Our pastor gives him glory. And that's one of the keys of why God gives this man such deep revelation. Not only deep revelation, but great leadership. Not only great leadership, but the ways and the, and the, and the, and, and, and the, the things of God that others may not know. It's not because he better, it's because he gives God glory. So if you want to know the deep things of God, you give him glory. This is why David was so effective. This is why David had all of these songs. This is why David spoke of these deep and, 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 and philosophical and theological things with ease because he gave God glory. You see, when you're speaking some deeper things, a lot of times we, we want to act like we, you know, we a Harvard maid. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we at the top of our list, valedictorian, we this and that. But I often read these this, this text, I often read these scriptures, I often study this book, and I'll be like, man, there's no way I should understand this. I'm not that intelligent. Come on, <laughs> I'm not. And I'm saying this not to be funny, but I'm saying this because this is really how I feel. And I think that's a, 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 a spirit of humility. I think that's, that, that tastes like humility to God. And what, what, what does the Bible say about humility? <laughs> God shall exalt the humble and abase the, 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 the proud. <laughs> so if you make yourself low and you give him glory and you lift him up, that means he going to have, he had, it's almost like he got permission to give you deep things. 
So you want to know deep things? You give him glory. And what that, what that tells him, Kip, what that tells him, what that really gives an indication of what's going on in your heart, it tells him that I could trust you with the deep things. I could trust you with some things. I, could tr I can even give you some things. I could even increase your pay and your promotions because I know you're not going to take the glory for yourself. <laughs> hey, y'all want to know some secrets? That's, that's a good secret. Y'all put that in your pocket. Y'all put that in your wallet. wallet. Y'all put that in your shoe. So when y'all get a little chance by yourself, y'all look at it and think about it again. And this is how I should be living. This is how I should be walking it out. Walking it out. You, you, <laughs> David, David gives some, some pointers. David gives some other things and some reasons, Miss Linda, why he should exalt thee. Why he should extol thee. Why should he be lifting him up? David gives some reasons why he not only himself should be uh, exalt, uh, extolling. Man, I'm getting them words. Well, it's both the same thing. Extolling and exalting is the same word, y'all. I'm just getting a tick to <laughs> I'm just getting it mixed up. But look, God, D David gives some reasons, my people. David gives some reasons. One of the first reasons he gave was he's told, he told, and, 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 and right in the first verse, we haven't got past the first verse, minister Sam. But look, he says, after, after he says, I will extol thee, O Lord, O Lord, O Lord. For thou has lifted me up. <laughs> and when I looked at that lifted up, Miss Leola, I, I said, well, it means lift it up. But a, a, a better description of it is, uh, uh, in the Hebrew uh, definition, he says, to draw up. And I thought about when, when like the old school days, when y'all had that bucket and y'all had to draw the water. I know some older people, they say that right now. Y'all shaking my heads. I know y'all grandmother, y'all grandfather. Some of y'all say that right now. Go draw me some water. Y'all heard that before? Go draw me some water. What that means is get that water up. Yes, get that water out. Or come get that water out and give it to me. Draw me some water. And this is what David is saying. He lifted me up. <laughs> hey, he, he lifted him up what? If y'all know how many times and how many uh, uh, circumstances and how many situations that David was in when Saul was after him, Saul was purposely trying to kill him. Saul was trying to do things to him. Saul was trying to just, whatever, talk bad about him, send uh, evil notes, do something bad toward him. You know how many times God lifted him up out of that situation? Yes, I could think about it in my life. I could look back sometimes when people wanted to do me harm, when something wanted to do me harm, when drugs wanted to harm me, when alcohol wanted to harm me, when knives wanted to harm me, when guns wanted to harm me, when the police wanted to harm me, when wicked people wanted to harm me, God lifted me up out of that situation. I, I could look back after they reminded me, people, they remind me, you don't remember this happened, you remember that happened? And I look back, I say, God, you lifted me up out of that situation. God, the enemy had you in a tight spot. The enemy was trying to set you up. The enemy was trying to do something. The enemy was trying to get you uh, 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 life in hell. The enemy was trying to get you life in Angola. The enemy was trying to take all your money. The enemy was trying to destroy your family. But God lifted you up out of that situation. So this is the first reason that David say that this is a great reason I should extol him. I should give him glory. I should lift him up because guess what? He lifted me up out of those hard places. He lifted me up out of those horrible pits. He lifted me up out of mental diseases. He lifted me up out of that hospital. He lifted me up out of that bad job. He lifted me up out of bad situation. I don't know about y'all. That's enough for to give the Lord glory. That's enough to extol them. That's enough to raise them up. So when people ask how you doing so well, you give God glory. You point to him. You raise him up. It's been Jesus Christ. He the one that got me out of this situation. Because guess what? I tried to get me out of this situation. I tried to get myself off these drugs. I tried to get myself from stopping drinking, stopping drugging, stopping going to clubs, stopping visit this one and that one. Stop. I tried, I tried, I tried. But guess what? It was God. It was God. And you don't think I'm going to talk good about him? And you don't think I'm going to lift him up? And you don't think I'm going to brag on God for you? For <laughs> Come on, man. That's worth giving God glory, my people. Because God, guess what? He lifted you up. He lifted you up. Psalm 40, verse, verses 1 through 3 says, oh, man, that, that, them, them words is getting smaller and smaller. I mean, what's going on? 
Malvo, I'm gonna have to go to the doctor. But Psalm 40, Psalm 40, I got Psalm 40. Psalm 40, verse, I waited patiently. Look how you say that. <laughs> I waited patiently. That, that, this, is, this is David also. So, so if we look at how David talks and how he says one thing about another thing, we can see that David was so familiar and so used to giving God glory that he knew he needed to wait patiently. <laughs> I waited patiently for the Lord, and he, he inclined unto me and heard my, my, my cry. You know, sometimes we pray to God, Kip. Sometimes we read about God. Sometimes we want God to do this. But guess what? We don't wait on him. Like, like, like Bishop was talking about, we, we do some fake blessings. We do some manufactured blessings. I'm going to help you, God. And what, 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 what Bishop say about helping God? You're playing God. How could you play God? That's ignorant. That's, 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 not, that's not intelligence. Actually, that's uh, below intelligence if you're thinking about doing that. How are you going to play somebody that know everything? How are you going to play somebody that got all the power in the world? How are you going to play somebody that know the, ending, the, the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning? How are you going to play somebody that's in control of time? <laughs> time, listen to him. How are you going to play the guy? Wait on God. Some of y'all right now making some decisions. Some of y'all got some things going on right now. Some of y'all want to do some things but you're not waiting on God. You're figuring it out your mind. You think you're clever enough to figure it out. But guess what? God gave you that wisdom in your mind. God was the one that put those thoughts in your mind so you could figure out something. But when <laughs> you take it upon yourself and try to manufacture your blessing, <laughs> guess what? Guess what it equal call? Sorrow. Amen. Pain. Hey, matter of fact, you put yourself in the back of that line so you got to wait a little longer. And guess what? When it's your turn, if you still haven't learned that lesson and you still haven't waited like you were supposed to wait, guess what? You're going to go back into the line again. Yes. And guess what you're going to get at the end of the line? What was not, what was for you, <laughs> somebody else going to get it, Ms. Linda. Yes. <laughs> hey, and ain't nothing, ain't nothing feel bad than when you see, some, you see something that belonged to you. When you see a blessing God showed you and wanted you to have, but for some reason, Ms. Lou, I'm right? Ms. Lou's right. You look at it and you see that person, oh, that's my blessing. Oh, that was for me. Oh, God told me to write this song. God told me to write this book. But somebody else came before and listened to me first. Ain't nothing like watching somebody get your blessing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing hurt more than watching somebody get your blessing. Just like that. that, that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to move. I'm move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. <laughs> but... He lifted him up, y'all. He lifted him up. And he goes on in the second verse of Psalm 40. He brought me up also out of horrible pit. <laughs> What's your horrible pit tonight? What's your horrible pit? You're in tonight. You're in a horrible pit tonight. You came, you came to Bible study to look for a way out of that horrible pit. And guess what? This, this brother, this fellow right here is giving you direction, giving you the answer, and that's lifting up him, even when you're in a horrible pit, my people. <laughs> he also says, out of a mirror clay, mirror clay. I don't know exactly with clay, but I'm thinking clay, when clay, or you get stuck in clay, it's hard to get out. Matter of fact, when I think clay get on your clothes, it's hard to get out your clothes, matter of fact. So he's taking you out of that miracle. A, 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 a situation you don't think you could get out. A, sti a, a sticky situation. Y'all ever heard that? A sticky situation. This is what David is talking about, a sticky situation. He want to get you out of that miracle. clay also, my people. But also what? <laughs> he set my, my foot. He said he going to get you out of that, that position. He going to get you out of the heart. But guess what he going to do? Oh, he going to set my foot upon a rock. Hey, hey, you were slipping. Hey, hey, you was about to fall. But God assured your step. He established your foot and set you on the rock. And you know who the rock is? That Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is not shaking. Jesus Christ is not slippery. Jesus Christ is not uh, uh, what they call it, a fair weather friend, where they act one way or another, then they act another. Oh, no, they don't play both sides of the, uh, the fence, y'all. They don't play both sides of the position where you, you act like this when one person is around, but when another person is around, you change positions. God don't do that. 
God is straight. God is on a, a, a rock. He, he, he established your goings and he make it a solid, firm, firm foundation. And I don't know about you, I want to be on a, set on a solid rock. I want to be set on firm foundations. I don't know about y'all. Look, hey, you ain't seen a house where the foundation all messed up? If the foundation messed up, all the house is messed up. If you look at the walls, the walls crack. If you look at the sheetrock, the sheetrock crack. If you look at the rooms and try to measure them, they all off balance and out of balance. If the foundation is not right, you might as well tear the house down and start back on the solid rock. <laughs> hey. I don't know about y'all, but today I want to be set on solid grounds. I want to be set on the solid rock, the rock of all ages, Mr. Uh, George. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what else he says? And he had put a new song in my mouth. I'm getting ahead of myself. Look, hey, a new, whoo, hey. I, 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 I sometimes wish I'd be in the same, you know, uh, category as Bishop. I wish I could sing, y'all. I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing. But... I can't sing, but I can think of songs. And I think sometimes God gives me songs. I'm getting ahead of myself, but look, and look, I'm being serious. Some of y'all got some songs in your heart right now. Some of y'all got some songs in your tablet that y'all haven't finished right now. Some of y'all got some songs that could make you millions. What's in your hand? What's in your book sack? What's in your pocket? Some of y'all got some songs. And y'all need to put it out. Don't worry about if you can sing it. You get somebody that, you, you, you go talk to them guys. They're going to put that song together. You just come with the words. They're going to put the melodies. They're going to put the notes. And they, hey, you give them a little cut, and they're going to make that song pop. <laughs> you give them a little bit more money, they're going to play your song on here Sundays and Tuesdays. You give them a little more money, they're going to put it on Facebook. They're going to put it, hey. That's what you learn, hey. You don't have to know how to sing, and you don't even have to know how to write songs. Amen. If God gives you a word in your mouth, them brothers could put it together for you. I'm telling you, I'm giving somebody some game tonight. And I'm talking to myself tonight. Talking to myself. Because that's one of my goals, Kip. Kip Kent. Kip Kent. Kip Kent. Kip and Kent's. Kip and Kent's treats. That's a, that's a, that's a stool. I'm, all right, I switched to the business. All right. Y'all want to do the garage sale? They got a garage sale. Hey, they're in Tabernacle. Hey, bring all your stuff out. Bring all your stuff out. We're going to have fever in that garage sale. Y'all going to get some prices that y'all never thought y'all could get for that stuff. That stuff been in your closet so long, that been in your workshop so long, been in your house so long. Y'all got to get rid of that stuff to finance that record y'all coming out with. Ah, 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 ah. Hey. What's in your hands? Now, now, let me get back from the songs. Y'all got some books in your life. Y'all got some books in your life. Hey, matter of fact, y'all used to write on them journals. Y'all used to write them love letters, pages and pages and pages and pages. Why you can't write no book? Now, all of a sudden, when God tell you to write a book, you can't write? What's wrong with you? Your fingers broke or something? You got to write books. book. I'm talking about pilots for shows. I'm talking about, you know, Comedy, man. Some of y'all got some comedy. Some of y'all, they got some fools up in here, man. They could do comedy. I don't know why they're not up here do comedy. I went another way, y'all. But look, let me get back, y'all. Reel me back in. I wanted to see that so bad. <laughs> There's some more I wanted to see, but look, I don't want to, uh, you know, mess up my privilege of being here, man. It's <laughs> I start cutting up, man. It might have me in 25, 26. <laughs> But y'all pray for me, that don't happen. Please, please. But look what else he says. And God had put a new song in my mouth. Even praises unto our God, many shall see it. <laughs> because you give praises to God, God is going to show you things. God is going to give you things. God is going to give you witty ideas, witty inventions. God is going to give you topics. God is going to give you things that you, you've been uh, 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 seeking, but you couldn't figure it out. God is going to give you those uh, 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 solutions that you've been looking for. And why? Because you're going to give praises unto our God. Not only that, many shall see it. What that also means, Lincoln, Josh, Israel, you don't be praising by yourself. <laughs> You'll be praising when, when you're around people, when you're around one or two people, when you're around a crowd. Hey, on Sundays, you walk up here, 
and you praise in front of people. I'm talking about the men, the women. Y'all take y'all two big shots to be raising your hand. Hey, y'all ain't got to come up here and dance and shout. No. Just walk up in it, walk slow, and just raise your hand. Don't walk too fast. We got security, so somebody pop off. But look, you be up here praising. You keep your hands out your pocket where we can see it. And look, praise God, praise God, praise God. We don't want Brother Anthony after you. We don't want Kip to the body slam, you know. But if we got to do that, what we're going to do after that is we're going to pray on you. We're going to call the ambulance and we're going to ask that they heal you. And then when you, when you get your stuff right, you can come back to church. But you got to stay in that seat right there. That's why we can see you. I told you I wasn't going to cut up, but Lord, that's y'all making me do that. I wasn't supposed to cut up like that. I, 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 I'm not going to lie and say to some other people, I got some foolishness stuck up in me, minister saying. I ain't going to lie. But what, what else? What else did David have a reason to extol God? What else did David have a reason to give God glory? What else did God do for David that he had no choice but to exalt God? <laughs> Hey, he said, I have some point B, and this is, let me go back to verse 30, verse, I mean, chapter 30, chapter 30, chapter 30, y'all. He says, at the end of this first verse, I'm going to only get through one verse, man. <laughs> but at the end of this verse, Minister Sam, he says an important thing, another reason why he gave glory to God. And he has not made my foes to rejoice over me. <laughs> You know, we, 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 we talk about that scripture and we also, 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 we often mention that scripture as in, you know, the weapon may be formed, but it will not prosper. <laughs> hey, David saw a plenty, plenty weapons being formed. David saw plenty of people, plenty of enemies that he knew was out to get him. David saw all of those things. David was in the spirit where he knew some people was getting after him. He knew that Saul was after him. He knew that he was going to have trouble with Absalom. He knew that people didn't like God raising him up, God promoting him, God uh, 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 lifting him up because he lifted up God. That's another thing. If you want to get promoted, you lift up God. <laughs> hey, when you, and then when, you, when, when, when God promotes you, Miss Mary, Miss Margaret, you give glory to God. And also, when you see other people getting promoted, Kent, Kent, you give glory to God. You don't be having your lip hanging on the ground. You don't be trying to uh, uh, mess up somebody else's promotion. If, even if you see somebody that's about to get promoted, you have discernment or the enemy showed you something where get, these people are about to get promoted, you don't do nothing to unhand, un, underhand their promotion. You don't do things to mess up their, their promotion. Hebrews, we got to get that out of our, our system, my man. So, so when we see it, especially Lafayette, Lafayette got a problem with jealousy, y'all. Let me talk about Lafayette. Hey, Lafayette got a problem with people getting blessed, man. Hey, but guess what? I'm going to say like my pastor told me, look, I'm going to tell them I'm sorry early because they're going to be hurting a lot. Because God going to be promoting me and God going to be blessing me. God going to be giving me things. And look, guess what? Guess what? If I'm riding a bicycle tomorrow, I'm going to be still hey, giving them glory. Hey, God, hey, God. My legs burning, my calves burning, but I'm going to give you glory. Hey, 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 my car is repossessed, my car broken, but look, I'm going to give you glory. Because guess what? If I don't have a bike, I'm going to have my foot. I'm going to have these tennis shoes. I'm going to have these ASICs. They're going to be walking down Louisiana. Look, hey, hey, I'm going to have a little limp. Hey, 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 I don't have my truck. I don't have my car. I don't have a skateboard, but look, I got my health. So I'm walking down the street getting my exercise. So guess what? When I get to church, look, my blood pressure will be right. Guess what? <laughs> hey, my sugar going to be correct. Guess what? I'm going to sweat out all the purities. Guess what? God going to still get the glory my people. Say, hey, regardless of what situation you're in, Regardless of where God got you, you give him glory. And guess what? If you see somebody getting promoted, you be glad like you got promoted. If you see somebody got a nice car, you act like that's your car too. If you see somebody in a big house, you act like you got a big house too. Because if you act right, God going to get you that big house too. If you act right, God going to have you in that car too. Hey, stop hating on the people. Y'all got a bad problem with haters. Hey, let Lafayette, y'all get that out your system. Hey, y'all don't want, hey, God sent a hurricane over here. God got to send a hurricane to get y'all right? God got to send China out here? God got to send, oh, man, what's it? Hey, hey, whatever God got to do, man, y'all 
don't miss the blessing. Y'all don't miss an opportunity to give God glory. Y'all don't get, y'all don't, don't miss an opportunity to, 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 to celebrate with people that's getting something. Y'all don't miss an opportunity to tell, I'm glad for you. I'm glad you got that. You deserve it. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't serve God. You didn't give God glory. I'm glad you got that. Don't be trying to, guess, guess what, when you, when you underhand somebody's blessing or when you're trying to mess up what that blessing is coming from, guess what, it's going to go against you. Because guess what, you're going against what God's doing. They're not doing that for themselves. They're not manufacturing blessings like you. God is blessing them, Corey. God is showing them, God is showing what he can do. God is showing his people or showing a person what they can get and achieve when they worship God. When they extol God. That's the secret. But guess what? He didn't let his enemies. God, David told God, I'm going to worship you because you didn't let my enemies uh, triumph over me. You didn't let my enemies rejoice over me. You didn't let them, you didn't let my enemies do what they were trying to do. Matter of fact, you messed up. As a matter of fact, hey, for those that are trying to mess up somebody's blessings or those who are trying to be an enemy, whether it's directly or indirect, directly, whether you are doing it by a, a proxy, whether you're doing it on the slick, guess what? You're not messing up their stuff. You're messing up your stuff because guess who you're going against? You ain't going against them. You're going against the hand of God and how short your hand is. How short your hand is. Guess what? God could make, look, amen. <laughs> God could make, you know, uh, 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 so much a change in your life if you would just listen to him. If you would ask God to take that J. Lou out your heart. Not J. Lou, J. Lou. And I'm talking about some jealousy. That stuff that's in your heart, that burn. When you see somebody with some nice stuff, when you see somebody getting promoted, when you see somebody got something you wish you could have, hey, amen. Ask God to take that out your heart. Ask God to remove that out your heart. Because guess what? You don't want the enemy rejoicing. <laughs> you don't want the devil and his minions rejoicing because you was used for his kingdom, not God's kingdom. You don't want to be used for the enemy's kingdom and get congratulated by the devil. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Hey, because guess what? When you're doing his work, he congratulates you. And guess what? You, guess what's your due reward? Death and destruction. Death and destruction. That's what you're going to get. So stop hating. Stop hating. Love yet, stop hating. <laughs> but look, what else? What else? And in your own time, y'all read Psalm 25, verse 2. I'm giving y'all homework, giving y'all homework, giving y'all homework, giving y'all homework. I'm giving y'all extra credits. I'm giving y'all some, some promotion. <laughs> Whether it's a dollar or a dollar fifty cent, I'm going to give y'all something. You, Psalm 28, verse 1 through 5. Psalm 27, 1 through 6. This all got to do with how you deal with your enemies. You know, but also David was conscious of God kept him from being a part of the enemy's plans. Did you know you could be a part of the enemy's plan? Some of y'all know it, and some of y'all are in those plans unknowingly. Some people got y'all doing some things that y'all don't have no idea that y'all working with them in the enemy's kingdom. <laughs> And, and, and this is how great they, uh, David say God is. He kept me from that type of stuff also. He kept me from participating in things that he knew was up for the enemy's kingdom. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be uh, uh, updated like that. I want to be aware of, I don't want to be participating in some things that the enemy got on and I'm thinking it's God because they fooling me. You know, the enemy slick like that. Y'all don't want to be part of some things that the enemy doing and thinking it's for God. So I want to say all this too, you know, be glad that God can get you out of those situations also. Because guess what? If, if the plan hadn't happened, if the plan hadn't fully hatched, you got time to redeem yourself. You got time to repent. You got time. Look, hey, we talk about snitches get snitches, but look, hey, you got to let people know when the enemy on their back. You got to let people know, hey, hey, I see that person. Yeah, yeah, I'm not talking about gossiping, but you that watching your brother and your sister back. That's what you need to be doing. Don't worry about snitching. Snitches don't even get snitches. Hey, man. Hey, hey. Snitches, when you snitch against the enemy, you get promoted. So when you walk around and you point out evil and you point out the devil tactics, 
God is going to promote you also because you're keeping uh, 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 others from that kingdom. You're keeping others out of that home. You're keeping others out of the devil's kingdom. Guess what? God loves it. God loves it. So y'all, instead of y'all hating on people, because you know you, you, you can hate a person when you see the evil or when you see the devil about to do something and you turn your head. <laughs> hey, that's just as worse as doing it yourself. So my people, be looking out for the enemy on behalf of your brothers and sisters. Give God glory, y'all. Give God glory, y'all. Give God glory. Give God glory. All right. I'm skipping some stuff, y'all, but I got one more uh, point. Well, I wouldn't say point. I'm not going to do point two. I'm going to do sub point D. You know, it says he has rescued you from the grave. And some of us, you know, I changed my stuff, sound boot. I changed my stuff. So it's not going to be the same as this. But I added a point D. I switched some numbers around, switched some letters around. I added point A. That's a whole other story. But anyway, sub point D. Sub point D, y'all. You, 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 you was almost on that grave. Matter of fact, the grave was searching for you. Matter of fact, uh, 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 you were so close to the grave that you could have smelled that decomposition? How you say it? Thank you, Kai. Say it again. Decomposition. I got to go to school where you're going. But anyway, <laughs> you were so close to the grave, you smelled that death. You smelled that foul smell. You smelled that, that you smelled, you saw the worms. You were so close to the grave. But guess what? God came and gets you out of that grave, Kip. But matter of fact, y'all had on that grave clothes. Matter of fact, y'all had uh, everything uh, uh, that was necessary to bury you six foot deep. You had those things on you. You was about to do that. Matter of fact, you was about to do that and go straight to hell. But God, God come get you out of that grave. Not only get you out of that grave, but kept you alive. You know how many times God has kept you alive? How many things you have drank and eaten that deserve to be, uh, you, you deserve to be dead? How many allergic reactions you didn't have? How many cars you didn't get in a wreck? How many times you've been on an airplane and the airplane was supposed to go down, but it didn't go on? Didn't go down. God, this should be enough reason to think about you are alive because God. And this is what David was thinking. I am alive, so I should be giving God glory. I should be extolling. I should be lifting him up. This is another reason why David thought of to give God glory. <laughs> that he kept him alive, that he kept him out of that grave. I don't know about y'all, but I've been close to that grave so many times. This, this is the times I know. Now, how many times I don't know? When I'm getting glory and God going to put it across the board. This is, remember this time? Remember this time? Remember that time when, when you was about to do this, about to do that? You was about to go in that grave. And guess what? You was about to go in that grave unsaved. You was about to go in that grave and be in the worst part of hell the horrible pit of hell. Some of y'all came here tonight. Some of y'all are in here tonight. And God has chose to tell you there is a better way. And the better way is in Christ. The better way is under Christ. The better way is to accept Christ. And look, <clears throat> we, I ain't got to tell y'all what y'all doing. The Holy Spirit is dealing with y'all right now. There are some things that you are doing that it is not uh, 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 pleasing to God. Matter of fact, it is, it, it's like filth to God. And when, when he says that, when he looks at those sins, he says he got to judge those sins. And, 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 and what, what deserves those, that punishment of those sins? What, do, what, what type of punishment do you get from doing those sins? Them, them sins, you go straight to hell. It, it only takes one sin to lead you to hell. And guess what? This day, this day, I mean, we got 24 hours in the day. You know how many sins didn't pass over our eyes? How many sins didn't pass in our hearts? How many sins we thought of? How many sins we wanted to do? How many sins? That, those sins deserve punishment. Bible says the wages of sin is death. And I'm not talking about 
only death in the flesh, but death in the spirit. And I'm talking about an eternity without God. See, without Christ, without you living in Christ, without your relationship with Christ, without giving your heart to Christ, you are enmity with God. And all that means that you are an enemy, enemy with God. I was talking about enemies. And the last enemy you want to be uh, uh, faced against is God. <laughs> Look, you could be an enemy with anybody, somebody down the street. You could be an enemy with somebody in your work. You could be an enemy with somebody uh, uh, you used to have beef with. But you don't want to be an enemy with God. You want to be a friend of God. And how do you become a friend of God? You have to accept his son. And guess what? He sent his son, only begotten son, to pay for those wages, to pay for those sins, for pay, to pay for that, that stuff you deserve and rightfully uh, uh, or earned without Christ. Jesus paid it all. <laughs> Jesus paid it all. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to uh, uh, trick Jesus to get it. You don't have to pay Jesus to get it. Christ paid it all. How did he pay it? With his blood. His blood wipes away his sins. His blood cleanses us as white as snow. His blood. He sacrificed himself. He sacrificed all the beatings, the punishment for you. Now tell me that ain't a good God. <laughs> that he would do that for you. You see, you see, you see. We, we, we think we got to be uh, 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 the worst criminal. We think we got to be the worst person. We think we got to be somebody in gold. We think we got to be somebody that murdered, killed. But guess what? One sin. And he didn't clarify what sin that is. I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about uh, 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 things that are not pleasing to God. I don't have to sit up here and name them. You know that. God is dealing with you right now. So all you have to do, all you have to do, is a admit. Admit that you got some things wrong. Admit that you're not right with God. Admit that you're living this life on this earth as an enemy, enemy of God. And look, I can respect a person that admits something is not right in them. I can, add, I can repent. I mean, I can respect somebody that tell me they did wrong. I could, I could respect somebody that was real about how they feel and they're not doing things that's pleasing to God. But even more than me, God can respect that. Not only respect it, but guess what? God could give you the faith to believe in his son. If you ask right now and you don't have no belief in your heart, if you don't believe what we're talking about or living about, God could give you the faith to believe that. That's how good God is. I don't know about y'all. That's a good God. <laughs> That's a good God. B, you got to believe what happened on that cross. You believe what the Bible says about that cross? Jesus crawled up on that cross. Jesus died on that cross for you. You see, sometimes we think that God is not a personal God. But guess what? When he was climbing up that cross, when he was getting that beat, when he was getting that stab, he was thinking about you, you. You, you, I'm talking about it, had your name in his mind, in his heart when he went up on that cross. I'm going to do this for, for Kate. I'm going to do this for Carl. I'm going to do this for, for Darla, Minister Sam, Montgomery. I, I'm going to do this for Linda. I'm going to do this for Alicia. I'm going to do this for Miss Irma. I'm going to do this for the Duffies. That's what God said when he got up on that cross and he took those beats. He thought about you, and I'm talking about a personal God that today you can make him your personal savior and see, confess. We're going to do that right now. So everybody under the sound of my voice, bow your head. And look, it's not the prayer, it's not the words, but it's the heart behind the prayer. If you're saying in your heart that you want God to really save you, he's going to do it because you believed and took him at his word and took what I just said about A and B literally. So everybody repeat after me, God, God. save me. Save. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill me up. Fill me up. Come, inside my heart. Come inside my heart. Make me new. Make me new. Clean, me up. Clean me up. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Forgive me Forgive. of all the sins I've committed. Past, present, 
future, forgive me. I'm sorry. And after today, dear Lord, I will extol you. I will lift you up. I will give you glory. Because you saved me. You made me new. And you made me walk on the rock of salvation. Thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, I got to just one point, y'all. <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting better or worse, but you know, y'all keep me in prayer. And uh, y'all keep your pastor, Bishop, in prayer, his family. Y'all lift up all the leaders. Y'all lift up all the deacons, ministers, uh, all the people that serving, the musicians, the worship team, the sound booth. They did a great job tonight. Y'all be praying for all of those things, man. And also be praying for your city. Be praying for this country. Be praying for the movement. Be praying for the guy, for the Hebrews, you know. Come to noonday prayer. Come to Thursday prayer when we have it. Be in prayer for your people, man. Look, somebody may be coming in the kingdom because you prayed for them. Somebody may be kept from being uh, killed, maybe murdered tonight because you prayed for them. So keep the, your people in prayer. Pray about all things. Pray without ceasing, man. Become an intercessor, you know. And I'm praying for the God that you would keep my people tonight. Let the latter part of their day would be better than the beginning. Father God, I'm praying that Father God, you, they would have prosperity in Father God in their future, Father God. They would have prosperity, Father God, in finances. They would have prosperity in health. They would have prosperity, Father God, in uh, their works, Father God. They would have prosperity in their family, Father God. But most of all, Father God, that they would prosper in knowing you, prosper in exalting you, prosper, Father God, in everything that they do, Father God. So, Father God, I'm praying that you keep them safe, cover them, be with them. And I'm asking all these things in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you all.